Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started in just a few minutes here. If you have not had a chance to get a packet, they're located on the stands up here at the front. Please grab a packet before we get started. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
right, ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you. Thank you for being here this evening. Um, hopefully when you came in, you had a chance to grab off one of these stands up here to pack it. Now, guys, we've got a lot of information that I want to go over, but it's been a year with the returning members since we have met to talk about the band trip. And um, this summer was the last time we met with the new parents. So tonight, I wanted to meet a little ways out. We've got one more meeting between now and the trip where I'm really going to hammer some details out. But tonight, I wanted to give you a lot of information. We are 44 days away from our cruise. And, and 44 days from now, we're going to be on board the Carnival Fantasy, probably 15, 20, 25 miles out of uh, off the coast, headed towards Cozumel, getting ready for dinner. Um, Kind of chill, and actually we'll be still almost two hours away from dinner, but in 44 days. So I wanted to meet tonight, go over, there's a lot of information here. I'm going to hit it pretty quick. I'll answer some questions as we go along, but just to kind of get us to start thinking about the cruise and, and, and how to prepare. How many of you guys have never been on a cruise before? This will be your first one. All right, awesome. Thank you. Hands on. How many of you guys, this will be, you've been on at least um, two cruises? How many of you guys have been on at least 10 cruises? How many of you guys have been at least 15? 20? 25. All right, good, okay. So, um, guys, and, and part of what we're doing tonight is we to give you information to make this as enjoyable as possible. As well, while I'm talking, I have got the excursion list. Remember, we signed up online for the excursions for our day in Cosmo. We've had this out today for the kids during class to sign up, but um, what I want you to do is check. It is alphabetized by first name because I had you to put your name in the computer, and we pulled it from the Google Doc. The first names were first. So if you'll find on there, make sure you're signed up for the right excursion. And if you are, go ahead and initial next your name. If not, mark through it, write which one that you want. They're in your packet. And, um, or if your name's not on there, okay, which means we didn't get you signed up, if you'll see me afterwards and we'll get you signed up. Okay, so I'm going to start that on this side. We'll pass it down the rows and around the room. But if you look at the packet, and I'm going to move quick. Look at the packet, guys. You see our itinerary at a glance. Notice the Wednesday night before we leave on Wednesday night, March the 14th. We're going to open up the band room. If you want to go ahead and bring luggage up, or if you need to drop off some prescription medication, remember that, that, that we do need to, to check in prescription medication, and Miss Sandy Kennedy and, our, and some of our chaperones will distribute medication. We don't want kids to have medication on them on the cruise because we don't want one kid to give another kid medication, them have an allergic reaction, then we've got some kind of medical issue. Remember, we have the medical forms that we've used with the band and all through the years. So um, that Wednesday night, we can check in medication. Thursday, we're gonna meet, load the buses here at 10 o'clock that morning. What that allows is the school traffic to get in here and to get out of the way. Everybody's parked, everybody's in class. We start showing up about 9.30 that morning. Um, start unloading, 10 o'clock, we start loading the buses up, putting our luggage on them, getting up on top, the park for Mobile. And then probably somewhere 11, 30, 12 o'clock, we'll arrive at the Port of Mobile um, and board the Carnival Fantasy, which will set sail on Thursday, March the 15th at 4.30. And then we are assuming, okay, that formal night will be the first day at sea on Friday, March the 16th. On the four-day cruise, that's when it usually is. So we'll have formal night that night, a day at sea on Friday. On Saturday, we'll be in Cozumel. We'll be in Cozumel from 8 to 4 that day, and we'll have our excursions on that day. Then notice on Sunday that um, we have another day at sea as we come back from Cozumel, and then we will arrive on Monday, March the 19th, back in Mobile. We'll disembark off the ship, get on the charter buses, come home. We should be home around 12 noon, 11, 30, 12 noon that day. It really depends on how long it takes us to get off the ship to get through Homeland Security and so forth on our way back in okay that's our itinerary just to kind of make sure that everybody knows we got a we leave out we got a day at sea we're in Cozumel day at sea we arrive back home now since our last meetings in January this summer and I've been announcing this in the band booster meetings um, we have discovered one thing now four years ago we took the band on a cruise to the Bahamas no problem eight years ago we went on the Carnival Fantasy to Cozumel no problem. But this year as we submitted it, I was told from the school district office, from the director of high schools, that the school board no longer approves out-of-country trips. Okay, which we have other groups take out-of-country trips. We go to Europe and all of the F tours. And what he said is that they just no longer, because of liability, the school district doesn't sponsor it. But we can get an outside organization such as the MH MHS BPA to sponsor the trips, which is what we've done. We talked about that back in November at the booster meetings and in December and so forth, okay? Not only are they sponsoring it, um, our liability comes through the company that we go through, Straight A Tours out of Orlando. We have to use one of two tour companies um, that do any kind of cruises with student groups, and Straight A Tours is the, is the preferred one 
the one that we've traveled with the last um, four years ago and eight years ago, and they're the ones that hold the liability. But I did want you to be aware of that. Now, what does that mean on our side of things? That instead of it being a school function, it will be a prearranged absence. We're going to miss one day of school on Thursday, okay? And instead of it being a, as a school function, it'll have to be a prearranged absence, which we've already talked to Miss Lady's office, the student services, and they said will not be a problem. We will arrange that, okay? But I did want you to be aware of that. Um, we were waiting on school board permission. Again, we sent that up there, and then I got that phone call, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Four years ago, it wasn't a problem. Eight years ago, it wasn't a problem. And I was told we don't do that anymore. Okay, so I just want you to be aware of that. Now, participants, we have 177 that have paid, signed up, that are planning to go with us. 58 of those are adults, so a great one to two ratio. 51 boys, 68 girls. Um, just so you know, the maximum capacity of the ship is only 2,056 if it's completely full. So we're gonna have almost a tenth of the ship is gonna be us. Now there's also another high school band out of Trustville, Alabama that's going to be on the ship as well. They've got their groups a little bit smaller than us. So between the two of us, we have almost 20% of the trip. This is gonna kind of be a high school band cruise out of Mobile on March the 15th. I talked to the Friday tours about that today. So, um, but their band is gonna be there as well. Their band may be performing on board according to Friday tours. They haven't filled out all the paperwork. We are not going to because we have concert in PA two weeks prior to, to the day that we leave. That's not enough time to pull the students from three concert bands together, put a program together and make it happen on board. Also, the last time we did it, which was eight years ago, I had to take all the instruments to the customs office in Pensacola and go through an inspection. We don't want to do that again, okay? <laughs> then we had to rent a cabin on board the boat to store all the instruments. It was not working, all right? So we won't be performing, but we have 57 cabins. Well, those 177 people saw a big group. They've got us all pretty much on two floors, the girls on one floor, boys on one floor, with adults on each side of them. Um, documents, photo ID, please make sure, one of the reasons I want to be tonight, please make sure that you, that you have a state issued, official state issued birth certificate, that's the one that's got the state seal on it, okay, and a photo ID, that'll work, you gotta have those two things, or you need a U.S. passport, okay, the only difference again between the two, the passport would allow you to fly back from Cozumel if there was some type of an emergency. With a birth certificate and an ID, it's going to be hard for us to get you back from Cozumel back to here without having to go through the U.S. Embassy. Okay, so, you know, if you use that passport again, go ahead and get one. You still have time to get one. But, again, the official birth certificate will work. Okay? Now, on that, let me say again, the official birth certificate, state issued. Gray Weaver's first cruise. I've shared this story with you before. My birth certificate all my life had my footprints and my handprints and a picture of the hospital on it. And I got to my first cruise in 2007 at Port Canaveral and they said, that's not your birth certificate. That's a souvenir, okay? And we had to scramble and I had to call the Alabama Vitals Office of Statistics and Records and have them fax one down and it was just a nightmare. So please make sure at the next meeting, we're gonna ask you to bring either that birth certificate or that passport. We're going to collect it. We've learned from two cruises before. Okay, we're gonna collect it, we're gonna put it in an envelope per cabin, put it in the school vault until the day that we leave. We're gonna double check them, triple check them, make sure we have everything. Okay, the day that we get ready to leave, we're gonna pull those folders back out of the vault. We're gonna have those four kids of that cabin come up and bring us their photo IDs if they have a birth certificate. We're gonna put that in the envelope so that when we get on the bus, we have everybody's documentation so that as we get off the bus, we can give it to the adults that are gonna help the students check in. Four years ago, Port Canaveral, 30 minutes outside of town, I get a phone call. Mr. Weaver, I don't have my photo ID. And then we had a second one. I left mine in my car in Milton, and we're in the other side of Orlando. So we have to fly through the driver's license place of Port Canaveral. We call up here, thank goodness we had connections here. They called down there, and we were able to finagle where they got a photo ID like printed. We got on the bus and went to port. Okay, so please understand, we'll collect those official documents, either the passport or the birth certificate at our next meeting. Everybody cool with that? Please secure that, put your hands on it, don't wait. Don't wait, we had a staff member eight years ago that, didn't, that was born in Guam that didn't get his in in time and was unable to go on the cruise. Okay, so please make sure you got that birth certificate. Any questions about anything thus far? Yes. 
a government issued, it can be a driver's license or military ID. Now, if they don't drive yet, you can still get a photo ID from the driver's license place. I would recommend that. Okay. So, Ms. Weaver, anything you want to say about that? Okay. I would definitely recommend if they don't have a driver's license or a permit, uh, you know, the restricted permit, go ahead and get a uh, some type of, of, of ID from them. No. It's not an official government issue. Yes. What about the passport cards if you don't have a full passport? Passport card's fine. <laughs> yeah, it serves just like a passport. Okay, good question there. All right, moving on. Checking. Let me explain how this is going to work. I shared with you we're going to collect those official documents. We're going to put them in folders. What we're going to do is we have some adult rooms with two adults. We're going to assign a room of four students to two adults. Those two adults are going to be the leaders of their check-in team and their onboard team. Okay, so as we get there, we're going to give those two adults, and, and we're going to try to match them up, parents. If they've got a kid in that room, we're going to do our best. It may not always work out because we may have three kids whose parents are going, and they're in separate rooms. But we're going to try to match it up like that so that there will be two parents that will help those four kids get all the way through the check-in process. They'll hold their documents. They'll have everything in a folder, and all six of them will go up to the check-in person, and they will lead them through that check-in process. Okay, same thing. Those two parents will kind of be their check-in parents on board the boat throughout the day. We'll have some check-in times that we ask the kids to check in with their adults to so that we know that everybody's accounted for. Okay, so I want you to be aware of that. So, um, again, student cabins will be paired with two adults. They'll have their check-in information. Those adults will hold on to that because they're going to need those passports and those birth certificates to get back off the boat and back in the United States as well. Okay, so those adults will hold on to that, put it in their safe, in their room. So they'll, be, they'll have two parents per room that will kind of be responsible for them. Okay, room checks, curfew each night as well on the cruise, we will have a curfew. Now that curfew will be late because the teen club, which our kids and the, the other band will want to participate in, the teen disco, all that stuff is usually open until about midnight or 1 a.m. So usually whenever that closes is when their curfew is, and usually the band staff and a few other adults of us go and we go room to room at midnight or one o'clock in the morning knocking on doors waking half the kids up so we can do room checks because the other half are exhausted and already asleep but um, we will do curfew at night and then we'll ask our kids we'll be giving them information on lawn to tell them don't leave your room until six o'clock in the morning okay that's as early as we want them out of the room we don't want them from 12 midnight to six o'clock wandering around a ship in the middle of the ocean okay and um I will tell you, Mr. Schultz, myself, we don't sleep a lot on these trips. Okay, two or three o'clock in the morning, I'm, you know, I'm a big eater. I may go get pizza, walk up and down the hallways and listen outside cabins and just see what's going on. Okay, so, um, so we, we keep a check on things like that. Also, during our cruise, there will be meetings, okay? We've got a straight A tours representative that will be on board with us. His name is Jason. He'll be, he's from New Orleans. He'll be with us 24 hours a day. All, all, the entire cruise. He will meet us at the port and he will stay with us all the way until we get back on the buses to come home. He has a ship phone. He will be in contact with the ship. If we have any kind of needs, he cut, he knows the captain's number. He knows the head of, of housekeeping. He knows all that. They are, that's one of the beauties of going through straight A tours is um, the person that we, we didn't have a person four years ago in Royal Caribbean, but we will have one this trip and they were wonderful. Any little issue that we had, we could, I, I, could, I could pick up a phone, call him, and he was right there, okay? So we will have that person. They will have two meetings. On the first evening that we get there, the first afternoon after the safety meeting, after we set sail, they'll probably meet with us and the group from Trustville. With both bands, there'll be about 300 of us or so gathered up into one of the lounges, and um, he will talk about rules of the ship. We expect this from you guys, all of our students, and we ask all of our adults to be at that meeting. He'll also have a meeting at the tail end of it, the night before, the last day at sea, that afternoon, that evening, they will have a meeting to talk about what we have to do to get off the ship. Because there's a process that you have to go through to get back through baggage claim, to go back through Homeland Security and so forth. So understand that there will be meetings. We'll also have other times, as I shared with you, that our students will be checking in with their two adults. There will be other times that we as a group, for example, at dinner each night, um, where we'll have our entire group together so we can get them information and so forth. So it's important that they realize, students realize that we will have meetings at different times throughout, that they're required to be there. Onboard purchases, understand this. Guys, once you get on board the cruise ship, once you get through the port, you go through all the steps, you cross over the gangway on the ship, they don't accept cash. 
Okay, well, adults, they accept cash at the casino, but that's the only place, okay? But students, they don't accept cash. Everything you do at that point will be on your carnival sell and sign card. Now, if it's your first cruise, it'll be blue. Second cruise, the after 10th cruise, it'll be red, okay? But it'll look just like that. It's just like a credit card. This is your room key, and this is your credit card, so to speak. This is where all your charges take place on the, the entire cruise is on your sell and sign card. Now, on your account, you can use a valid credit card. It needs to be in the student's name. You can use cash, but they need a minimum of $50 cash to start with that they have to put on that day when we get to the port of mobile when the, the, four, the four members of the room, the two adults go up, they'll have to put that cash down right then and there, okay, on their card. Now, if they run out of cash, they'll have to go back on board to the purser's desk and put more cash on their card. So they can use cash or they can use a debit card that has a MasterCard or a Visa logo on it, okay? But one of those things, everybody must have an account on board. Yes, ma'am? Yeah. Now, if you're on board, you can set it up. If, you, if a parent's going, you can set them, set them up under yours. And you can set parameters on that, because we do that with our girls. We go on cruises, okay? So, um, but understand that, that everybody has to have an account on board. You can't just show up, get a room key, with nothing on you have to have a minimum of $50, okay? Again, credit card will work, debit card will work. Now, understand on board that pretty much everything is included, but there are some other things that they may wanna purchase. The soft drink plan, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Photos, every night before dinner, they've got these beautiful backdrops. They take great photos. Matter of fact, you can ask my wife, we have stacks of them in our bedroom on our, on our dresser. Still in the stack, still in the same original, okay? But, Still in the bags, where you bought them, right? Just stack some, I don't know what we'll ever do with them. But they're beautiful, you look at them, you go, I gotta have that photo now, I look really good. What they do, do they trim off 25 pounds? Okay, so, but, but they, can, they may wanna purchase photos. There's a shopper that can get specialty coffees and desserts. It's not required, you can get dessert at the buffet, you can get dessert at the restaurant, okay? But, um, but they may want that specialty coffee, or you know, they've got that piece of cake that's about three foot by four foot, you know, that's four or five dollars. Um, stuff like that. There is a game room there, like a video arcade. They, you know, a lot of them, we have the one last time that spent a lot of money in the video arcade. Okay, um, and there are different shops on board, souvenir shops, and 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 different things like that. They may optionally spend money there. Yes. How much do the photos cost? Photos run. Fifteen to twenty dollars. Yeah, about fifteen to twenty dollars each for the, like a big five by six. We will do one group photo. We've got one over there in the window somewhere. Uh, we will do one group photo, and uh, but I don't have any information. I'll have that up next week about that. Okay? So, I, and I'm telling you this so you can start thinking financially what they need to have. Now, listen, the soft drink plan. Let me talk about that. They call it bottomless bubbles is what it's called. Okay? And and this is for somebody that really likes soft drinks. All right? It is $7.95 per day, and you have to take it out for the entire cruise. You can't be like, well, I just want it for one day. It's times four days plus 15% gratuity for the cruise will be $36.57. Now, what does that mean? That means they go to any bar or if they're at the restaurant at night, on their card, we don't have one on this one, because, but they'll put a little sticker that goes on there and they can show it to the bartender and they'll give them a canned Coke or a canned Sprite and a glass with ice in it, or they'll bring it to your table at the restaurant. So you can have unlimited soft drinks, okay? If you're like me, I just want a Coke or two a day, uh, there's usually about two fifty, two seventy-five, and they'll give you the can and, the, and, and so forth. Okay, they'll charge it to your car. So something for you to think about: the soft drink plan. Okay, um, it can be purchased when we check everybody in online, which will be a little bit later. I'll talk about that a little bit later here. Or you can actually purchase it once you get on board, and they just charge it to your car. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to tell people that I did look up the free cruise before, and you can bring soft drinks on. Yeah, I got you. it. And drinks, right. And they right. have to be carried on? 12 pack. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've got that a little bit later. Yes, that's oh, right. Okay. So you can, listen, and, and what she was saying, you can bring a 12 pack of canned soft drinks on board. Now, you don't have a refrigerator in your room, I wouldn't tell you. Okay? So you'll be drinking them warm. You may can beg a bartender to give you a cup of ice. Okay? But um, but you can bring a 12 pack of cans. You can't bring anything bottles. You can't bring bottled water. You can't bring bottled Cokes. Okay? But you can bring that. Now, speaking of bottled water, you may want to think about this. This is a great weaver thing because I like to have water in my room because I don't like to drink that water out of the faucet because it's salt water that turned into fresh water. 
and I still don't know if the water in the toilet's fresh or salt. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't tasted it yet. But you can pre-order bottled water, a 12-pack, and it's more expensive than a Winn-Dixie, but for the convenience, uh, for $4.50, the 12 packs delivered in your room when you show up. Okay, I'm one that, like, late at night, I'll, I want to be able to grab a bottle of water. I'll wake up, i got dry mouth or whatever, okay? Something for you to consider as we're talking. Also, let me encourage you, keep track of how much you've spent on board. It's real easy to buy that picture and get that soft drink and play the game room. And hey, I'm going to the souvenir shop. All of a sudden, I got a $300 bill. Okay, there are several ways on your TV in your room. You can go to the customer service desk and print you out a statement. I'm going to talk about an app that I recommend to you called Carnival Hub as well. Now that you can keep track of all of your expenses on there while you're on while you are on board the ship. Yes, ma'am. No, man. It's just a, it's just a case of water. Okay. okay. So, um, good question though. So, keep track of how much money. That's important. We're gonna preach that to the kids as much as we can. Yes, sir. Well, you talking about the, your? Yeah. When you get on board, you put your credit card down, and everything that you spend is on this. So, if you order a soft drink plan in advance, you order a bottle of water, it's all charged to your account that you'll pay at the end of the cruise. Okay, that's right. If you yeah, we order through the Carnival website, you can pay you pay for it when we order. If you order the soft drink plan in advance, you go ahead and put your credit card down before we leave, and you go ahead and pay for that. If you order the bottle of water, you go ahead and pay for that. Does that make sense? Yes. They're right, it goes on your credit card. Right. We'll talk a bit more about that yet at the next meeting. I'm just trying to kind of hit the high points to get your brain kind of thinking about what you want. Now, as well, I'll be with just a second. We will not offer the band bank on this cruise. You know, we go on like Washington, D.C., New York City. We do the band bank where you take out money every morning and so forth. Guys, we've only got a day in Cozumel, and that excursion is pretty much going to be paid in advance except for lunch that day. So we are not doing the band bank on this one, okay? There's no need. You're going to get there. You're going to put your stuff down for that first, for the cruise, and you're going to pay at the end of it. What was your question? Hey, um, on the, the little set, the, set, the sale and sign card. Yes, ma'am. Um, if I, I'm not cruising, but he is, but he doesn't have a credit card. So can I still use my credit card? I can we do don't, that? Jan, you helped me with that. I don't think it, had, it needs to be a card with his name or it needs to be cash. So I need to you may can get the bank to give him a debit card. Yeah. That's, That's kind of what I would recommend. Now, yeah. and, and put a limit on it. Listen up real quick, guys. If you use a debit card, they put a hold on your account. Right. So right. you got to be careful with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does everybody understand that? So you're not going, but your child is going. They can't use your credit card with your name. It needs to be a card with their name on it. Carnival requires it. That's not us. That's a Carnival thing. So it can be a debit card. And as Miss Weaver said, if you miss that, they will put a hold on your account once they, you know, that $50 or that $100 or so. Okay. Any questions about the online onboard purchases? Again, we've got one more meeting. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about some of this that we can pre-order. But I want you to be thinking about that. I want you to be thinking, do I want bottled water? Do I want the soft drink plan? Okay? What to expect? What to expect during the cruise? Food, food, and more food. Okay? That's why Grant Weaver likes to cruise. I'm going to tell you. Listen, guys, again, let me tell you, the buffet... And that buffet will be open from 6 o'clock morning. It'll close for about 30 minutes between the meals so they can transition. And sometimes the whole buffet that closes just certain sides of it do while they're moving from lunch to dinner and so forth. Okay? The restaurant, the sit-down menu where you can order what you want off the menu, okay, is all included. Room service. Now, we did discover something new last night, and this is new since we cruised, that room service is now all of a sudden new on Carnival from about 10 o'clock at night to 6 in the morning. They are charging for room service, like $2 to $6 for different items, okay? So something to keep in mind there. It used to be that you paid gratuity. If you ordered room service, you just had to, to tip them when they would get there with a receipt. But now from 10 o'clock till 6 a.m., we discovered that last night. But the pizza is open 24 hours a day. There's a pizza thing on there where you can go and get about three or four different kinds of pizza. They'll give you a slice to a pizza. The... Um, the ice cream, they've got the soft serve ice cream machine, but there's always a line for soft serve ice cream. Okay, but they've got about four or eight of those ice cream machines on board. The deli, where you can get paninis and different kinds of sandwiches, grilled cheese sandwiches, that's open 24 hours a day as well. You can expect that. You can expect trivia games. 
on board or trivia. There's different kinds of games. There's different activities that will take place, especially in the days of sea. The day we're in Cosmo, not a lot goes on in this show, okay? But the, the, the two days at sea, there are all kinds of activities. There are all kinds of shows. At night, there are Broadway-style shows where they have singers and dancers and, you know, professional lighting systems and props and, and backdrops and all that. I love the shows on Carnival, usually. Um, so all kinds of things that are going on. What's a fun times guide? I've got some of those right up here I'll pass around. These are from the Carnival Dream, which is a bigger ship, but from this summer. We went back in July. And this is something that you'll receive in your room every night. Okay, you'll go to dinner, you'll come back, and the little Oompa Loompas come in your room and they pull the, 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 the spreads, the, the bed sheets back and get your bed ready. And they used to put chocolates on the, on the pillow, which the chocolates were awful. And uh, they would build you these, you know, they'll build you these towel animals and you come back in, it's like, man, what happened to my room? Okay, it's all ready and the lights are turned down low. But there'll be one of these on the pillow. These fun times, God, I'll pass around in a minute. You can see are kind of the day, act, the next day's activities. You get them the night before, and it tells you all the different things that are going on, from trivia games to bingo to all the different youth activities and so forth. Okay, I'll pass these around. I'll put a couple on this way. Here, take that, pass one around. I'll put one back this way. So, fun times, guys. You will get those at night. Now, as well, let me say this for those that have never been on a cruise before. Okay. Cruises are also about not only eating, but relaxation. First cruise I took my dad on, we had to really talk him into going. First morning, we left out of Jacksonville on the fascination, and we wake up about 9.30, 10 o'clock, roll out of bed the next morning, he's there staying next door, and I walk outside, and my dad's coming down the hallway. He looks at me and says, son, I've been all over the ship, now what do I do? And I go, ooh, dad, we gotta talk. It's time, you gotta learn to relax. And he's like, well, I've walked this whole ship. Now what am I supposed to do? And it's like, Dad, you're going to have to find a chair by the pool and just let your hair down. And so, um, but it's about relaxation, especially the days of sea. You can find it at activities. You can go to the sports deck. There's games and stuff, you know, basketball tournaments, volleyball, that kind of stuff. Or you could just take a book and sit by the pool or, or sit on one of the outside decks and watch the ocean go by. Okay? There's a team club. There's, there are students that are that are, what's the age on the team club, Jim? Up to 18. Okay, if you're 18 or older, you can't go in, but there's a team club, and they have different activities, okay? They may have team disco night, they have different games and video game tournaments and that kind of stuff. So there's plenty of stuff to do. Yes, ma'am? But they can go into like the regular disco night. Okay. Huh? Yeah, team clubs at 18 cannot go in. Now, what to wear? Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm trying to get through this quick, guys. I know that you know, your time's valuable. What to wear? On board, days at sea, casual wear. We're talking like shorts, t-shirts, sandals. Yes, as we head out of Mobile Bay, it may be cold in Mobile. It'll start to warm up pretty quickly. As we get closer to Cozumel, it'll be in the 70s and the 80s. So shorts, t-shirts, sandals, swimwear during the day. Let me say this, with cover-ups. Listen to me. Again, I'm going to preach this with cover-ups. Now, if you're at the pool, your you're son, I'm not going to ask you to wear a uh, cover-up. But if you get up to go to the buffet, don't be in your bikini. Or guys, don't be walking around with a shirt off at the buffet. They have signs that ask you not to do that. But you see it every cruise, and you see people just staring them down. Like, Look at that person. Really? Really? I'm trying to eat here. Okay? So, so... Make sure you got, you know, guys, put your T-shirt back on. Ladies, put a cover up on. You're going to the buffet. You're going back to your room. You don't want to ride the elevator in a bikini or without a shirt on. Okay? Everybody follow me on that? But casual wear. I'll say this about that real quick. I've got it later. Check your swimsuit and make sure it fits. I have been on way too many cruises where the people didn't look in the mirror. You with me? Okay? You follow me? It's like, ma'am, you should have really looked in the mirror for you put that, put that on before you left, okay? Now, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm being realistic, all right? So, also, note this, guys. First day, listen to me. Listen to me. First day of the cruise, as we leave here, we need to be in our black halftime show shirts. That way we can identify. Miss Weaver, Mr. Scholl, and myself, we're going to be standing there watching for all the black shirts, the Milton High School band shirts, to make sure everybody gets through registration. So, that first day, we want everybody in their black band shirts. Parents, if you're going on the trip, you don't have one, we've got some we'll save you, okay? So see us about that a little bit later on here. So it would help. I'm just also, I'm going to say. All right? Um, 
But that's what you can expect. Relaxation, food, fun, games, just a good time to relax. <laughs> Test, test, okay. It's good, it's good. We just had Mr. Graceful back there. Um, let's talk about dinner. Now, one of the coolest parts of a cruise, and most time our kids at first I'll go, ugh, but every cruise, the, the last two cruises we've taken the band on, I'll watch our kids just blossom in this, and that's dinner in the dining room. Now, most of us aren't used to, you know, we go to Ryan's or we go to Ruby Tuesday's or Chili's, and the waiter or waitress comes up to the table. We're not used to that sit-down formal. I've got three forks and two spoons, and then, what does that knife do? Okay, and wait, there's a plate there and a glass there, and wait, is that yours or mine? So what we do is we ask our kids the first two nights, there's four night crews, they are required to eat in the dining room. Okay? They're required because, to me, this is part of that training. And, and what I've learned is I remember the first time we took the band eight years ago in the Fantasy and other Hernandez were, were with us. The kids were all like, man, I just want to eat the buffet. I want to eat the dining room. And so the first night, they're all sitting at the table. You know, they bring the menus out. And they're like, well, this is kind of cool. I can order anything that I want off the menu. Yeah. Okay, and the waiter and the assistant waiter and the major D, and everybody's waiting on them. And then the second night was formal night, and they're all like just dressed to the hilt. And they all came walking back in and sat down. I mean, you guys look good. And I said, the guys, third night, you can do whatever. And the third night on that cruise, we're coming back from Cosmo, was kind of rough. The boat was rocking pretty bad. Okay, and so a bunch of them showed up for dinner, and they're like, okay, I can't do this. I can go back to the room. All right? But I'll never forget the fourth night, we're sitting there. And, of course, all the adults, we're sitting there. We want dinner. We want to be waited on. We like that. And all of a sudden, all the kids started coming back in. They're in their suits and their dresses. Like, hey, wait, wait, guys, it ain't formal night. What's going on? No, it's the last night of the cruise. <laughs> and the kids dug them, and I, I know you're sitting there, but the kids really dug, loved eating in the dining room because it's, you know, it's an adult thing to do. So um, our, di our dinner every night is at 8.15. We have late dining this time, which is much better, I think, when you're on a cruise ship. Our group will be in the same area, in the same dining room, all 177 of us will be in the same area. They will be assigned tables. And we'll talk about this in the next meeting a little bit more. And after the first night, once we learn where our tables are, they sit at their assigned table. We'll let them kind of get up and move around because we know, you know, just because they're in a cabin with somebody doesn't mean that they want to eat with those people every night. Okay, so, but, um, but understand the first two nights they'll be required to be there. Third and fourth night, they can eat the buffet. They can eat wherever they want to. They can eat the dining room and so forth. Okay, now about the dining etiquette and so forth. Guys, on Tuesday, March the 6th, which is our next meeting that night, from 4 to about 5, 35, 45, all of our students that are going on the cruise are required to be here. We're going to go through a dining etiquette workshop, so to speak. We've done this the other two times before, where we're going to teach you which forks to use, which spoons to use, how do you scoop your soup, how do you know which is your bread plate, which is your drink glass. We're going to go over that. Now, parents, if you want to come, by all means, show up. We'll go over it with you as well, okay? So, so understand that. Now, Dining room attire. Let's talk about what to wear in the dining room. Okay? Dining room is casual resort wear. What does that mean, though? That means we can't wear shorts in the dining room. We can't wear T-shirts. We need to have a button-up shirt or some kind of shirt like this or, or something a little bit more than a T-shirt. No swimsuits, no blue jeans or any kind of jeans are permitted in the dining room. Okay? Now, I will tell you there are people that will be outside of our group that will show up wearing shorts and flip-flops. And again, people will look down at them, okay, because it's the experience. So what, what do I recommend? Casual that night, some kind of slacks, your guys, some kind of slacks, a button-up, nice button-up shirt is fine. You don't have to wear a tie or anything like that, okay? Or some kind of nice pullover shirt that's not a T-shirt will, will, will suffice as well, okay? Miss Weaver, what would you recommend for the ladies on the non-formal night? Okay, so be thinking about that. Be think at least for the first night, you'll need to wear that casual resort wear. Now, formal night, listen to me. Another reason I want us to meet tonight, formal night, probably the second night, the Friday night, is what they call the captain's dinner. Okay, that night, formal night includes either a tux or a suit for the guys, like a coat and a tie. Okay, ladies, some type of formal dress. It can be a short or long dress, it can be a gown, or it can be a formal pantsuit type outfit. Okay, again, it's a little dressier thing. We talk about concert etiquette with our kids and how you're supposed to dress, you know, dress up and so forth for that. 
this is a great opportunity for that as well. So borrow a suit, find a suit, guys, but it does need to be shirt and tie with some type of coat. Again, you're going to see people on board that don't follow that, but that's what the cruise line asks. That's what Straight A Tours, I, I took one of this straight from Straight A Tours, what they recommended and told us to do. Okay? So for the second night, for formal night. Okay? Let me say this as well about the, the dinner menu. Again, you order what you want off the menu. Now, there'll be some, some items listed at the bottom you don't need to worry about, but if you want a lobster tail, it's like, you know, $16.95, you can add to, but you're gonna see starters, and we'll talk about this in dining etiquette. You know, I order a salad, I order soup, and if I see something like egg rolls or fish tacos or something, okay, on the appetizer, I'll order two or three things because it's shelf prepared, which means it ain't like when you go to Chili's, okay? It means that when it comes out, the taco may be that big and about that tall. All right, so, but what you'll find is into this meal, you'll be full because you get the appetizers, you get the main entree, you get the dessert, and by the time dinner's over, you're full. Okay, but you can order. If you want to try escargot, if it's on the menu, this is your chance to try it. If you don't like it, okay, I'm done with that. Thank you. All right, everybody follow me? Unfortunately, on the four-night cruise, we don't have lobster night. Okay, I think they may have prime grill, but they don't have lobster. Okay, so just be aware of that. Any questions about dinner? I want you to be thinking about the formal wear thing, though. Kind of get that in your mind. Be thinking about what am I going to take for that. Medical services. Let me just say this. Dr. Mai, you can't go. He's off at a conference. He's been on with us the last few times. If we'll take our medical kit. If we have colds and different things like that, we'll, we'll help him. If we need medical attention, there is a ship infirmary there, okay, that can, you know, provide band-aids, that kind of stuff. There's a doctor on board that's a private contractor. If we do have to see the doctor, we'll go see the doctor but there is a charge that comes with it. We spent one of our cruises with our oldest daughter and the doctor quite a bit, okay? And so I'm um, thinking we may have to even fly her home, but it turned out not to be that way. But, but understand there is a doctor and a medical center and so forth that's on board there. Also, if you have special dietary needs, you have a seafood allergy, gl gluten allergy, or something like that, if you'll send me an email, I need to let Straight A Tours know that so they will notify um, Carnival Cruise Lines. Okay, as well, not only letting me know, but when you get to dinner, let the waiter know, hey, I have a seafood allergy, remind them. They should already know that, because we've let Carnival know, but so that they can make sure that you don't get anything you're allergic to. Okay, any questions? Moving on, safety, security. Understand this, the cruise line has their own security team on board. These individuals are highly trained. I'm just gonna tell you, I've seen them in action, not with our group, but on personal cruises, I've been on dealing with drunk people. They are highly trained. I can't think of what it's called. I think they're trained in Asia. India. They're trained in India. They are highly trained. They know how to handle people and how to put you down on the ground in a, in a heartbeat. Okay? Um, they mean business. Now, kids, I'm students, I'm talking to you. They mean business when it comes to safety. Okay? They're easy. They kind of blend in the background. A lot of times, you want to move their round. Okay? But um, they mean safety when it, when it comes to it. We mean safety as well. Understand this, if you get in trouble on board the ship, we're going to kind of be there to witness and try to help you get out of it, but they're going to deal with you. And I've seen them do several different things, not from the band. We've never had trouble with the band, but I've watched them put people off the ship. I've watched people unload their bags and stand on the dock as the ship is leaving, cause them help. Okay? I've watched them put people in their rooms. I walk by and you'll see security standing outside their cabin door because they've been arrested and put in their room for the rest of the cruise. And they also have a jail on board, okay? And I just want you to know that up front. I want you to be aware of that. So don't, you know, don't think, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, act out and be all kind of crazy and all that kind of stuff. They mean business, all right? And we mean business as well. Also, and parents, I know this is your biggest concern and I've been on over 25 cruises. For your safety, don't climb on rails or put yourself in a dangerous situation where you could hurt yourself or fall overboard. We hear those stories every once in a while where somebody fell overboard on a cruise ship. And I'm gonna tell you guys, I've been on a lot of cruise ships. I have never gotten close to rail and fall. I could fall overboard. Most of the time they're this high. So when somebody goes overboard, they've either climbed up on something or somebody's done something really bad and picked them up and lifted them and hoisted them over the rails, okay? Now listen, I'm, I'm being dead serious because I know it's a parent's greatest fear. That's one of my greatest fears is we lose somebody. I couldn't imagine falling overboard and watching the ship sell off, knowing that, man, I'm probably dead, okay? So, so listen to me. So what does that mean? Don't climb on stuff, don't be, don't be dumb, all right? Second thing, that means be smart. 
be smart. 10 o'clock at night, don't go walking on the top deck where it's a little bit darker up above the pool deck. Don't go walking by yourself up there. Use the buddy system. Stay in the public areas. You with me on that? I've never been on a ship where they've had any kind of problems like that, but we don't want to be on one. You with me? So think about that stuff. Parents, talk to your students about that. Just be smart. I've never felt unsafe on a cruise ship ever. Okay? But make sure that you're aware of your surroundings. Use that buddy system. And we're going to have the check-in systems and all that. Okay? We're going to do everything we can to make sure you have a great trip and that you stay safe. But I did want to address that. All right? I've never been. Anybody else ever been on a cruise ship where you felt you were just going to fall off because the railing was so, so, so short? Anybody? All right. Um, rules of behavioral expression expectations guys in the next meeting we're going to talk about that we're going to go into a lot of detail about no boys and girls rooms no girls and boys rooms next meeting we're going to really hammer that home that's why we're covering this general information tonight okay so just just understand there are expectations if you don't follow those expectations we've got consequences that that we'll put out to you as well we'll talk about the next meeting carnival hub out let me talk about that as well carnival on all their ships now has an app i showed you the fun times just going around but they have an app called Carnival Hub that I would highly recommend. It works for free on the ships. It works on their Wi-Fi. It won't work right here. That's all I can see on mine right now. It says chow for now. Because when I checked out the last one, it told me about it. Okay? But I'd recommend it. It's, it's available uh, for Android. It's available on the, in the iTunes store as well. Okay? What this does, I should shared with you earlier, you can keep track of your finances, what you spent. Once you get on board, you'll log in using your name, using... Um, your folio number and different things like that. It'll kind of track you based on you being on that cruise. And also on there, just like the fun times, you can look at the whole schedule for the ship. You can set favorites. I do it all the time. You set favorites and say, hey, I want to go to the um, 80s rock trivia game at 2.30. And it'll actually alarm me like five minutes beforehand. It'll pop up on my phone and go, boom, rock trivia starts in five minutes. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to that. Okay. There's another part of this Carnival Hub out that I and I recommend to you um, that is, is brand new. And, and one of our greatest frustrations taking the groups in the past is how do you communicate? Even we go with family. If I take off and go to the buffet and decide I'm going to the trivia game, how does my wife know where I'm at on the ship? And then I come back to the room looking for her, and she's out looking for me. And I'm like, well, let me go back out and look for her. And she comes back to the room, and I'm not there. Okay? On this, there's a chat feature where you can chat with the folks in your room. It's five dollars for the entire cruise. You, you, pay, you, you, you sign up for it. It says we're going to charge your your sign and sell card five dollars. Is that okay? You hit okay, and then you can start linking with different friends of yours that are on the cruise. And so it's just like texting. And it all goes through the ship system. It doesn't cost you anything but the five dollars. Something I want you to think about. Okay, I'm asking really for our students to do that and those adults so that those adults can check in if those kids have a need they can check in and they'll have a way to get up with that adult if they need them as well. Okay? This is all brand. I mean, this has only been out about a year and a half with Carnival. But the Carnival Hub out is right there. Um, there is onboard Wi-Fi, but listen to me. Number one, you didn't go on a cruise to stay on your cell phone all the time. I get it. That's one reason I like to go off cruises because I don't get the text and I don't get the phone calls and, and all that kind of stuff. But I know from a parent's perspective, one of our greatest frustrations in the past has always been well, how do I know my baby's okay? And I used to like rent Wi-Fi on board and every night I would sit up at midnight and I would do an update back home on the website or Mr. Schultz would say, everybody's fine and RC got sunburned today. So the parent would go, RC, oh, that's my son. Okay. But a good way to communicate could possibly be the Wi-Fi. That's why I even put it on here. I don't want you spending your time on your phone when you're supposed to be on a cruise ship. You can do that at home. But the social Wi-Fi plan, if you buy in advance, is $4 a day times four days, so 16 bucks. And then you see the other one's 1095, 1488. I just want you to know that's there. I don't want to keep anything from you. I don't recommend getting that really high, high priced one and then just spending the whole time on your phone. You didn't pay all that money to stay on your cell phone. You follow me? But the, the first one, the $4 a day works with Facebook. It's the social app, all those social apps. So if you want to use Messenger, it's so mom and dad can go, hey, how's your trip going? Hey, you doing okay? It's there for that as well. Everybody follow me on that? Everybody understand why I'm explaining that to you? Um, as well, there are cell phones, telephones in each cabin. Sorry. Okay. Those phones, actually, they've come down a lot in the price. We used to, we'd show up to like the Bahamas. And I remember when I was going to cruise and I'd find a cell phone, I mean, I'd find a pay phone and I'd call and go, Mom, Dad, I'm doing great. Love you guys. Talk to you later. $8. <laughs> you know, 
Um, there are phones that are in the room now where they can call each other's rooms and so forth, or they've always been in the room. They can actually call the U.S., the back to the continental U.S. Um, the price now on Carnival is $1.99 per minute. So every once in a while, if me and Mrs. Weaver on a cruise and we've left the girls back home, we'll pick it up and go, hey, just letting you guys know we love you, and um, just checking in with you. Everything okay? Oh, good. The doll's good? Okay. So that's another option, parents, just so you know. It's charged to the room. The students in the room are going to have to figure out, okay, who called this number? And it costs, you know, $3.68. you got to pay that $3.68. Okay? So once you know it's there. Any questions about that? Good. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, cell phones. I'll preach this next time. Turn your cell phone on airplane mode. The Wi-Fi stuff, the Carnival app, will all work through the Wi-Fi on airplane mode. Do not leave your cell phone on, on a cruise ship. They have something called cellular at sea. It will work. Okay? True story. Weavers are returning back from, you know, the South Caribbean. We're off the coast of Miami. I can see Miami. I can see the lights of Miami. Let me check my cell phone and see if it works. We've been on a seven-day cruise. It's day six. I'm missing Facebook. Turn on my cell phone. I'm looking at Miami. I got a signal. Check Facebook and everything's cool. I'll walk down the steps back to the room without turning my cell phone back off. Text, 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 text. Oh my gosh, what's going on? We get to Port Canaveral. The next day we're on our way back. We're not 30 minutes out of Port Canaveral. AT&T calls. Mr. Weaver, you've got charges for $250 on your phone for cellular at sea. True story, right, Ms. Weaver? I remember it as 250. <laughs> I had to change my underwear after that phone call. But anyway, so, but, but, but it, guys, true story, okay? Your cell phone will work at sea and it will cost you tremendously. So we'll make sure those things are on, make sure they're on airplane mode, okay? So parents, I want you to know that. Don't say, hey, call me on your cell phone. They can call you, but it's going to cost you over $100, okay? So everybody understand that. Day in Cozumel. Hopefully you've already signed up. The excursion list is going around. Let me kind of reiterate to you. We are offering four excursions that day. Now, I'm kind of a control freak on these things, especially when we're going out of the country or if we go to New York. I want to know where our kids are, where our people are, and I kind of keep track of them the whole time that we're away. So, package number one, Paradise Beach Break. And, and I've given you some information I know is confusing. Guys, there are two prices for Paradise Beach Break. One is $13. What is that? That includes your ride from... Port of Maya Pier to Paradise Beach, and you're right back, plus $3 for a beach chair, for a lounger, some lounger they call them, those chairs where you put your feet out and all that kind of stuff. That is $13. Now, what Paradise Beach Break asks for all their customers that are there is that you spend a minimum of $10 on food and drink that day, which is easy. There's a taco, a taco truck that's there and different food selections and and different things like that. So when I've been giving you these prices of 23 and 43, that was including the $10. You don't need to pay me the $10. You're going to pay them. Okay? So your price for that, if you just want the beach chair, is $13. If you want the water activities, which include all the water trampolines and the water slides, they got all these inflatables out there on the water. They've got a few kayaks. They've got some snorkeling equipment. They've got some paddle boards. You get a wristband for the water activities. It's $33, plus you've got to spend $10 on food or drink that day. And it includes a beach chair as well. Okay? So that's the two prices on that. Right now we've got 113 people that are signed up. That excursion, we'll um, get off the boat, leave about 8.30. We'll start coming back about 2.30, give our folks a chance to shop there at the port. Okay? Excursion two is the three reef snorkeling by boat. It's $70 per person. It's through Carnival. You pay us $70, we will pay straight A tours $70 per person that will pay Carnival. Straight A tours will arrange that excursion for us. Okay? They get off the boat. You see that day about um, at 8.30 that morning. Okay? They get on a, on a boat that takes them down the coast just south of here to three different um, snorkeling spots, three different reefs. And they'll get off the boat. There are licensed people on board that will show them how to snorkel. They've got the vest. They've got the mask. They've got the snorkels. And then the, the flippers, and they will kind of guide them and into what they do. They'll feed the fish and so forth. Okay, that excursion is seventy dollars. We have fourteen people currently signed up for that. It's eight thirty to twelve noon. Once they're done, they'll come back to Port of Maya Pier, do some shopping, and um, and then get back on board the boat. Was there a question? Oh, Mr. Schultz will be going on that one as well with those guys. On the side. Okay. Yes, ma'am. 
they can, the group that's going snorkeling, they can actually probably see once they get back on board the boat, they'll be back at noon at the pier. Yes, ma'am. They'll need to have at least ten dollars cash. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Good question. Okay. So that's package number two. Package number three, the ancient city of Tulum, is the Mayan ruins that are on the mainland. Now, as I preached or as I shared with the kids, this is a ninety-six dollar excursion. This is an all-day event. Okay. Now I've been to Tulum, but we landed over on the mainland with a boat, and Tulum is the real deal. It's awesome. Okay, it's the you get in the courtyard and you've got the different Mayan pyramids and different things around you. You can see all of them, but um, you can't climb on any of them there. Okay, but understand this: they're going to get off the boat as soon as it docks that, that day. They're going to get on a ferry boat that's going to go across the water. You can barely see the mainland. Cozumel's an island. It'll go across the water which according to reviews, I've never done it before, can be kind of rough a lot of times. So a lot of folks talk about getting seasick and so forth on the ferry going across. They're gonna get over there, they're gonna land on the mainland, they're gonna get on a charter bus, they're gonna go an hour south on the charter bus, it's a guided tour, and then they're gonna get to Tulum, they're gonna get off the, the boat, I mean off the bus, they're gonna walk them through, kind of give them a narrated tour, they give them about an hour and a half to explore Tulum, and then when you come back out, it's about a, about a mile walk down Tulum, there's a it's, a, it's a national park, there's a trail, a road that everybody walks back up. There's some shops there, there's a little show with the Pamphlet Flyers um, where they, they can climb up the pole and they're all swinging around the pole with a ribbon tied to their feet. There's a show that goes on, they'll grab lunch there and then um, after that hour and a half, they'll get back on the bus, go back the hour north, get on the ferry boat, come back over, get directly on the ship, okay? That's excursion three. Now that's, I told the kids, that's about three and a half, four hours of travel time that day an eight hour excursion, okay? You got 45 people signed up. It's gonna happen from eight in the morning to four at night. Package number four, Discover Mexico Park in Cozumel, $20 per person. Um, they're not gonna meet till 11.15. They'll get to kind of stay on the boat or shop at the pier. Those people will, get, will, will meet the bus there. Um, Discover Mexico is like a, almost like a Mexico museum. It's only about a half a mile from the port right there. We'll pass it going to Paradise Beach. Um, but it's really cool. It talks about the heritage. There's a, a, an art section. You go in, there's a bunch of small, minuscule um, mock-ups of all the different great places in Mexico, from Mexico City, and all that kind of a park you walk through, and there's all these mock-ups with little bitty people and all that. So well, we've got four folks who are doing that. Okay, tonight, as that list is coming around, if there are any changes, please make sure you notate that. If not, make sure you initial, because tomorrow I'm going to contact Straight A Tours, and they're gonna help us um, arrange Package two, three, and four. Yes, ma'am. It doesn't say anything about that, so I'm not sure. You know, maybe we'll check Carnival's website for that. Okay. Now, moving on, financial things, guys. Make sure your trip's completely paid, paid please, including the excursion by next Friday. I'm gonna give you a little bit longer on that Friday, February 12th. If you have questions about that, Miss Weaver's got the financial report over there. She's right there in the pink by the money box. See her afterwards on that. Also, and I know we've been working on cruise guys. We really need to try down that the cruise is pretty much paid. We need to be getting fair share in all that marching expense. I've already had to pay them and we've still got about 20,000 of unpaid fair share. Okay, so we're in the hole right now. I've got bills that are coming up that have to be paid. So, so please check that as well. Spending money on, on, on the trip. Remember, they'll need souvenir lunch money for our day in Cozumel, okay? And then anything else on board you think they may need, okay? The days at sea, they can only buy stuff on board the ship. But they will need lunch money, souvenir money in Cozumel. Now, at Puerto Maya Pier, there are a ton of shops. There are probably 30 or 40 different shops that have T-shirts, have anything you could just about want, you know, wrestling masks and all that kind of stuff. Okay, yes, ma'am. What? They do take cash and cosmetics. Yes, ma'am. They do. They take American money. I would. I wouldn't worry. I would strictly go with U.S. dollar. Do they take debit? They do. Most of them take debit, credit card. But listen, if you're going to use that, you need to let your bank know I'm going to be in Cosmetics on this day. Okay. So, spending money. We'll talk more about that next time, but I want to get you thinking in that direction. Additional items. We're going to provide luggage tags, two luggage tags per participant. They're little surfboards. Um, what color are they, Miss Weaver? They're lime green. Neon green. So as we get off the boat, you, we can look through. We'll be in a big warehouse, and there'll be like different zones of luggage. We'll look for all the lime green surfboard tags. Okay, so at the next meeting, we'll get those out so that everybody can put their names on them so that all of our luggage is identified by the same color tag on top. 
Also, we'll have lanyards. Let's say Milton High School Band Cruise 2018. Um, you'll notice on the, the sign and sell card, we'll take the hole punch. A lot of times Carnival will do it for us. We'll put a hole in it. This is everything you're going to need on board the cruise ship. So with your lanyard, you just hang it around your deck. Room key to get in. Oh, I need a coat. I need to charge. So it'll be on a lanyard. So you'll also get a lanyard. Okay, let me talk real quick about motion sickness. I'm starting to get away from me. Motion sickness. I can ride in the back seat of a car and get motion sick. Okay, I'm one of those that when I get on board a cruise ship, sometimes I get motion sick. If you are prone to motion sickness, I will tell you this is a smaller carnival ship. If it's a, we got a front coming through that's pushing waves from the northwest, you'll feel this boat sort of rocking. So, what I recommend, see your doctor, get those transderm scope patches that go behind the ear. Now, mine dries mine out, my, my, mine dries my mouth out. I cut mine in half and usually do a half one. They're good for like three days, usually three to four days. You put on the first day and probably by day four, you're gonna be so used to walking the hallway with the boat moving, it won't even bother you, okay? Or they've got the wristbands, those work. I have a pair of those that I use. Um, Dramamine, okay? Not drowsy Dramamine, yeah, you won't sleep all pretty, okay? Or Jim George for some folks too something for you to be thinking about in advance if you're prone to car sickness okay keep that in mind look page you're almost done here start thinking about what to pack i've covered most of this stuff already formal wear for the captain's dinner casual resort wear for the other dinners remember no shorts blue jeans t-shirts swimsuits casual wear for around the ship we talked about that it's going to warm on up as we start to get further south swimwear make sure it fits don't forget your cover up in your room Personal hygiene stuff. I do want you to know this, in the showers, there's a body wash and a shampoo um, dispenser. You just hit the button, and they provide shampoo. So you can bring that stuff if you got your certain shampoo. I always like their stuff, it smells good, and it's free, okay? <laughs> but I'm a guy, I know how sometimes we, we can be. All right, personal crimp items. Understand this, each room in the drawer already has a blow dryer, okay? We don't need four girls bringing four blow dryers, plugging all four blow dryers in, or you're gonna start flipping circuits on the boat. And they've only got one extension cord that they drop in Mobile and drag all the way, okay? So, so understand that. So personal print items, start talking to your roommates about that stuff. Guys, I always take a fan that I put in my suitcase, a smaller tower fan, because the room's kind of quiet at night. I'm used to sleeping under ceiling fan. There's no ceiling fans in the room. Something you may want to consider, a small fan. You know, don't bring four of them, just bring one. But um, you're allowed to bring power strips um, and such. You just can't bring surge protectors. They will, they will confiscate those before you ever get them on board. Okay? The regular cheap Dollar General power strips work. There's usually two plugs, or one outlet in your room with two plugs on it that, that works with US, with, 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 with our kind of power, the three prong. Okay? So I always take a power strip as well. Okay? So under now, I take a little extension cord for my fan most of the time. So understand that. Something to be thinking about. Each person, again, is allowed to bring a 12-pack of soft drinks. No bottles. No bottles. Okay? On board with them, just an idea. Luggage. Now, we'll have plenty of room underneath the buses, but listen. There are going to be four of you students in a, in a cabin that's about the size of my office with four beds. Okay? So your luggage, number one, we're only going to be gone four days. You're going to wear your clothes for the first day. Right? We're going to be gone five days, including over there and back. So you don't need to pack a lot of luggage. You're going to overpack. I'm going to go ahead and tag you. But be thinking about the luggage you bring for your formal clothes. Get with your roommates. Start talking about one person bring a hang-up bag and everybody put their, their formal wear in that one hang-up bag. You with me? So everybody bring in a hang-up bag because your luggage has got to be stored somewhere in the room. Though Sometimes you get most of that stuff under your bed. Okay? But you bring those big hard shell, big old giant suitcase, it's going to sit in the middle of the floor and you have to step over it the whole cruise. You want something that's soft that will collapse that will go under the bed. Be thinking about that. Guys, you don't need to bring a pair of a pants, dress pants for every night. You're only going to be in your dress pants probably for about two hours. You're going to dress for dinner, go eat dinner, come back, probably slip back into some shorts and, and hit the cruise ship again. So it's okay to rewear some of those, okay? So I'm just going to tell you, you don't need to, you know, change, have a different shirt for dinner every night, okay? But but think, start thinking about that kind of stuff. Don't overpack it. Don't overpack it. What's not allowed on board? Guys, no, nothing, no club, no irons, no steamers. If you need an iron, they've got laundry rooms on, on certain floors. They've got an ironing board and iron in there. It's a controlled environment. Remember that fire is the worst thing that can happen at sea. Okay? So, electrical, household appliance, you cannot bring a coffee pot. You cannot bring a hot plate, toaster, humidifiers, anything like that. Yes? Flat irons? They can bring those. 
they can bring those, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a less cool appliance as, as far as like households. Heating pads, no. Candles, open flame items, no. Large coolers, no. Knives or scissors with a longer than a four inch blade, they will confiscate, no. Bicycles, skateboards, surfboards, any kind of footwear with the wheels, those little ones with the wheels on that, they don't allow those, okay? This was all there, I had to put it. Inflatable kiddie pools, do not bring your kiddie pools. It was on the list, I just wanted you to know, okay? Now, next meeting, guys, chaperone meeting will be Tuesday night, February the 20th at 6.30. For the chaperones that are going, we're gonna go through a training where I'm gonna kind of talk to you about how to get around the boat, how we're gonna handle the check-in, how we're gonna keep check on the kids, and so forth. So chaperones, if you could be at that meeting, I'll provide dinner that night. If you will, bring your birth certificate, your passport. We're gonna get one of the cows in here, the computer on wheels. We're gonna go, go through the check-in process. Four years ago, we kind of had a nightmare. When we're checking in as a family, me and Miss Weaver and our kids, it's easy for us to sit at home on the computer and do. But a lot of times, if you've got folks from different families that are, were trying to check in the same room, it was holding everybody else up because they're waiting on whoever the main person in the room is. So we're gonna have a check-in at the parent meeting that night with the adults, and then the week, um, you'll see a little bit later here, with the students, we're gonna do it the week after FBA, the week prior to us leaving, we're gonna call the students in and go through the check-in process with them here as well, okay? Because it was a nightmare last time. We spent hours trying to, to get everything worked out because there was all kinds of bugs in the system. So um, chaperones, your meeting is that night. Students, your participation, participant meet training, remember, is on Tuesday, March the 16th at four o'clock in the MHS band room. We're gonna discuss dining etiquette, finding your way around the ship, onboard etiquette, and we'll talk some about Mexican culture, give you some Spanish words that you know, El Baños or whatever that you may need uh, when you're when you're in Mexico, okay? So, so be aware of that. Then guys, for the parents and the students that night, same night, Tuesday, March the 6th, 6.30, we'll have a final trip meeting. That's where I'll give you contact information. We'll talk about the rules and so forth, okay? Any questions? None? Yes. The sign and sale uh, card, they can put the $50 per person on or order for a card. When do you do that? When we check in at the Port of Mobile. If you're going to use cash, right. If you're not, if you're using a credit card, we do that that night when we're doing the online check in. Go ahead and put the credit card on it. It saves a ton of time in the port. Okay? Other questions? Was there another one in the back? Yes, ma'am. I don't think that'll work. It has to have your name on it. It has so, to have a name on it and it has to have that MasterCard visa. It will work because it has your name on it. What will? The Bluebird card at Walmart, they send it to you, it has your name on it. It will work. Okay. It has to have your name on it, the main thing I know. Okay? Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. What if you like put $100 on your car cash? What if they don't use all of that money? Do you get that back or? You? Yeah, Just leave Sometimes they mail it. But adults, I can tell you how to get your money off without doing that. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Not that night, they won't. No, I just want to get on board. Okay? Any other questions? Not I got four quick, three, three quick reminders. Guys, again, next meeting. We need your passport, I'm just saying, I'll be right. We need your passport or your birth certificate. Bring it to the next meeting, please. Also, we get ready to do the online check-in. Make sure adults, if when you come, have that debit credit card you plan to use, let us know if you're using cash, and also be thinking about the soft drink plan if you want a water bottle of water, if you want the Wi-Fi plan. Before that last one, yes, ma'am. Only if, if they're going separately from the group, the only problem is when the, your child checks in, you would have to be there with them. That would be the only issue. Because, or can they set up when they get on? No, they have to have the $50, the one thing. What you may be able to do is just not set it up but then when we get on board, go to the purser's desk and you can add it. See Miss Weaver afterwards. Special dietary needs. Guys, if you've got that, see me or send me an email. I will forward that. Also, folks that are, I know that we got quite a few folks. We could not get any more cabins, a matter of fact, with our group, because they were, it was, we, we had the maximum number. 
Um, if there are folks that are going outside the cruise and you want to ride the bus with us over, well, I'm asking to, you to help us offset the cost. $25 a person to ride the bus over and back. Just, you know, one-time charge of 25 See me or send me an email on that, okay? If you have questions, feel free to email. Talk to one of us afterwards. Thank you. Have a great evening. Financial questions, see Ms. Weaver over there.